Have you ever called somebody the apple of your eye? What does that mean? You know, David said to the Lord, Lord, keep me as the apple of the eye. What a tender prayer. We're gonna learn a little bit about that today. Welcome to Everyday Truth with Kurt Skelly. We believe the Bible is true and relevant to everyone, everywhere, every day. If today's conversation is a help to you, Take a moment to leave a review or share it with a friend. Thanks for listening. Now, let's join Kurt for today's episode. Hello, friends. Welcome back to today's episode of Everyday Truth, Psalm 17 today. And this is actually introduced, interestingly enough, as a prayer of David. So typically we see the introduction say a Psalm of David, but this says a prayer of David. And... It, what a prayer it is. In fact, uh, this prayer of David is a prayer that you and I uh, probably should learn and learn from. And so let's dive right in. Psalm 17, verse number one, uh, David says, Hear the right, O Lord. Hear, H-E-A-R. Hear the right, O Lord. Attend unto my cry. Give ear unto my prayer that goeth not out of feigned lips or duplicitous lips, lying lips. Hear the right, O Lord. Have you, ever, have you ever prayed that way to the Lord? Have you ever begun your prayer to the Lord? But Lord, uh, this is not fair. Lord, you know what's right. Hear the right, O Lord. Settle this thing according to the truth. And that, that's a good thing to do by the way, when you feel as if you are being treated unfairly, when you feel as if things are not equitable, when you feel as if nobody else is listening, to come right to the Lord and say, Lord, you are the ultimate judge. You know the hearts of men. You know right from wrong. You know the past from the future. And so, Lord, I'm taking, I'm appealing directly to you. How often in life do we appeal to lesser resources. And understand this, that even the most, even the most honest judge is not omniscient. Even the most fair judge doesn't know the motives of the heart. So when we go to the Lord with our complexities, when we go to the Lord with our inequities, or at least our perceived inequities, uh, we can go to the Lord and have confidence that he knows and he will judge rightly. So hear the right, O Lord, attend unto my prayer, unto my cry, give ear unto my prayer. And, and I like the fact that David said, and, and I'm, I'm coming to you without feigned lips. Now, obviously God knows that. God knows if you're lying or not. It's not like you have to go to, go to the Lord and say, Lord, you know, I'm telling the truth, as if the Lord doesn't already know. I think the point here is that by saying it out loud to the Lord, it's really a test, it's really a, a check on my own character. As I come to the Lord, Lord, I'm coming and I'm coming in the sincerity of my heart. Lord, I'm not lying. I'm trying to be honest with you. And I think that's more for the person praying than it is necessarily for the Lord, obviously. Look at verse number two. Let my my sentence come forth from thy presence. Lord, I'm ready to hear your decision about this. Lord, I I want finality to this situation, but Lord, I want the sentence to come from you. I want you to be the one that is the arbitrator uh, arbiter of this. I want you to be the one that makes, that, that brings down sentence upon this situation in my life. Uh, We can fool some people, but we can never fool the Lord. And some people, we can go and plead our case, but they don't have our best interest in mind. But with the Lord, we can know that his sentence is always going to be given in righteousness. So uh, David says, I want the sentence to come from you, Lord. I'm casting myself upon the mercy of your court. Verse number two, let thine eyes behold the things that are equal, equitable, fair. Lord, I'm pleading for fairness in this case. Now, understand that 
when we plead for fairness in regard to how God treats us, that's probably not the best prayer because if God treated us the way that we really deserve, uh, we would have nothing. You know, we all deserve uh, much uh, greater punishment than what, what we get. And if I really got what I deserved, uh, I, would, I would go to hell. That's a ha harsh reality, but that's true. Uh, salvation is us getting what we don't deserve. That's not what David's praying for here, though. David is looking at his situation and saying, Lord, in regard to my dealings with other people, in regard to my, this may have been a prayer about Saul when he was being treated so unjustly or Absalom or any other number of people in David's life where David was really in the right and those people were in the wrong, even though in many cases they were in the majority. And so David feels as if his recourse here is, Lord, I, I need you, and I need your sense of righteousness and justice, that which is right and good. I need your sentence, and Lord, I want you to judge what's equal. Verse number three, thou hast proved mine heart. So here's the confidence with which David prays. And I, I wonder if, if this is the confidence with which you and I can pray. Because David has done some soul searching. It's not as if David has encountered unfairness. And the very first thing he says is, Lord, hear me. This is not fair. No, I think David has first done some introspection. Lord, why is it? And Lord, is my heart right with you? And Lord, is there something that you're doing in my life? Something that you're honing? Some rough edge that you're, that you're shaving off in my character? So watch what David says in verse number three. He says, thou hast proved or tested mine heart. Thou hast visited me in the night. So David testifies, Lord, you, you've, you've examined me. Lord, you've, you've looked at my motives. Uh, you have visited me in, in the quiet places all by myself. Lord, I've been open to your inspection. I've been open to introspection. I think the famous verse is Psalm 139, where David says, search me, O God, and know my heart and try me. Uh, know my ways, uh, know my thoughts. See if there be any wicked way in me. So David had this spirit of humility, the spirit of introspection. Verse number three again, thou hast tried me and thou shalt find nothing. I am purposed that my mouth shall not transgress. What a statement. So David said, I passed that test. Lord, you know my heart. Lord, before I ever came and offered my complaint before you, before I ever pleaded for your sentence to come from your presence, Lord, I looked, at, I looked deeply inward. I asked for you to try my heart. Lord, I passed that test. Lord, as, as far as I know, uh, I am right with you and, and I'm right in this situation. And Lord, I have purposed that I am not going to sin with my mouth. I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to gossip. I'm not going to bellyache. I'm not going to murmur. I'm not going to uh, use corrupt communication. I'm not going to lash out with hatred. Lord, I'm taking my words to you. That's a difficult thing when we're being mistreated, when we feel as if we're being uh, cat marginalized in the minority. Sometimes it's very difficult for us not to want to say something. And sometimes what we want to say is not necessarily even something loud. Sometimes it's just the under the breath. Sometimes it's just the complain to the other person or the passive aggressive, sarcastic comment. And David said, I have purposed that I will not do this. Why? Because it's so easy, especially when we're being mistreated, to sin with our words. Verse number four, concerning the work of men, by the word of thy lips. What a statement. Concerning the work of men, by the word of thy lips, I have kept me from the paths of the destroyer. So what has helped David in this situation? What has guided him? Well, I like the, the, the language that David uses in this prayer. It's, it's not what we would typically say about God's word, but, but think about it. 
the words of thy lips. I think if we're not careful, sometimes we look at the Word of God just as a book. We look at the Word of God just as a, almost like an encyclopedic resource. Like look up the verse on this or look up the chapter on that. And David had a much more relational view of God and God's Word. And I love what he cut. And when we get to Psalm 119, wow. I mean, you'll just see all the multifaceted ways by which David just praises the Word of God. But I like what he says here in Psalm 17 because he, he talks about the Word of God as the word of thy lips. And let's never miss as we hear the Word of God like on a podcast like this, as we read it ourselves, as we listen to it being preached at our churches, let's, let's never lose sight of the fact that these are the words of God's lips. God is speaking to us. This is relational. This is not just some kind of a, an academic exercise. Verse number five, David is praying for uh, protection and guidance and he says in verse number five, hold up my goings in thy paths that my footsteps slip not. So interesting. Verse number four, I, I, I'm being kept by the words of thy lips. And Lord, I'm asking that you would hold my goings, the choices I make, the, the day-by-day activities of my life, the places I go, the plans I make, all of it, that my goings... Uh, that, that, that you would hold my goings in thy paths. Lord, keep me on the straight and narrow. God, keep me in your will. Lord, I'm asking for guidance. Help me not to stray. I'm acknowledging you in all my ways. Direct my paths. Lord, I want to stay on the right path. I don't want to slip. I, I find that even the prayer there of David is instructive. Lord, help me to be sure-footed in the right path. Lord, don't let me slip as I'm walking in your will. It would be disingenuous for David just to open-endedly pray, Lord, just don't let me slip, and I'm going to do whatever I want to do, but Lord, protect me, and I'm going to make the decision I want to make. No, David actually couched his prayer with those guardrails to say, Lord, I'm asking for you to give me direction and protection and sure-footedness in thy paths. So the the kind of the, the, the presupposition there is that David's desire is always to walk in the will of God, in the paths of God. Real quickly, verse number six, David said, I've called upon thee, for thou wilt hear me, O God. The reason I dial your number, Lord, is because you always pick up the phone. <laughs> Have you ever called certain people and they never answer? Before long, you just give up. I'll just text them, right? Why? Because they just don't answer the phone. Like the, the Lord always picks up. Lord, when you call, when I call you, you always pick up. Incline thine ear unto me. Hear my speech. Show thy marvelous loving kindness. Uh, the, the term loving kindness is such a rich term in the Bible. It's the Hebrew word chesed, chesed. You got to get in the back of your throat a little bit, chesed. And it's God's uh, unfailing love. Sometimes it's translated mercy, sometimes loving kindness. I think it was Tyndale that couldn't really find an English equivalent for chesed. He said it's God's love, but it's God's kindness. So he coined a whole new word, loving kindness. And I love that. So uh, it says here, show thy marvelous loving kindness. O thou that savest by thy right hand them which put their trust in thee from those that rise up against them. Lord, I need your direction. Lord, I need your word. Lord, please hear me. I need your answers. Lord, I need your love. I, I feel as if others have failed me, but Lord, you never fail. I feel as if the love of others have waxed cold, but Lord, your love has never waxed cold. What, what a reminder uh, David brings to his own heart right here. And then finally, verse number eight, keep me as the apple of the eye. Hide me under the shadow of thy wings from the wicked that oppress me, from my deadly enemies who can pass me about. 
God, I'm in this really precarious situation. Lord, keep me as the apple of the eye. I think there's a couple thoughts there. First of all, Lord, keep me in your focus. The apple of the eye, what I'm focusing upon. Lord, keep me in your focus. But I think the other idea is, you know, the eye as an organ in our body, the eye is well protected with the bones around the eye. And we, we just instinctively protect the eye. Why? Because the eye is so important. We keep our eye clean and, and we wear safety goggles and, and all of why? Because the eye is just so paramountly important to our body. Oh God, keep me as the apple of thy eye. What a, what a, a apple of the eye. What a great thought that is. Well, we're out of time, so we'll stop there in verse number nine. We'll come back to the rest of this psalm next episode. Hope you'll join us. God bless you, my friends.